Whether it's for the holidays or a birthday, there's nothing better to encourage a child's imagination than to buy them their first telescope. But where to start in that process can be a very difficult and overwhelming thing with so many options out there with a lot of different price ranges as well. In today's video, we're going to break down some of the best telescopes that you could look at to buy for your child to get them into amateur astronomy. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know about any questions that you have regarding amateur astronomy or telescopes to purchase in the comment section below. To start off today, let's set a few parameters of what we're going to be looking at. I'm going to assume that you or your child do not currently own a telescope, but that you do have an interest in astronomy and exploring the nighttime sky. I'm also going to assume that you're probably not going to want to spend more than $100 on this first purchase because you honestly may not be sure how serious this is going to be and how long your kid may be into it. Based off of that, we're going to take a look at some different types of telescopes, some options that you can buy, and things that you can go out to see in the nighttime sky with that new telescope. Let's begin by breaking down some different types of telescopes and seeing what may work best for you and your child to explore the nighttime sky. There are three main types of telescopes that people start to look at for their first purchases. And those are a refractor, a reflector, and a Dobsonian telescope. Although a reflector and a Dobsonian are the best bang for your buck in the hobby, I actually wouldn't recommend them for a child because of the mirrors, which can bring about more maintenance and upkeep. What I would recommend for a child is a refractor. These are great entry-level telescopes, and this was the first type of telescope that I got for Christmas as a kid back in 1992. They're low maintenance, easy to move around, and also have that classic telescope look, which can be really important for a child. Now that we've settled on the type of telescope to get, let's take a look at the best type of stand for that telescope. You're gonna come across two different versions of stands. One's gonna be alt azimuth and the other's gonna be equatorial. I would encourage you to stay away from the equatorial stands because of their polar alignment and complicated mechanics to simply point them towards an object. An alt azimuth base is gonna be much preferable for a child because it simply involves pointing up and down and right to left to find the object in the nighttime sky. All right, now that we figured out the type of telescope and the stand that you want for it, let's talk about size. Now, the larger the aperture of a telescope, the more light you're going to be able to pick up from the object that you're looking at. And that will lead to more detail at higher magnifications on most nights of observing. But working with the parameters that we're talking about here of pretty much under $100 and a telescope that weighs a certain amount for a child to be able to move it around, we're going to focus on a refractor that's between 60 millimeters and 70 millimeters in size. And I think that's going to be a great starting point for most kids. The next thing to take a look at is focal length. This is the actual length of the telescope, which is gonna help us to determine magnification when we get to that point later on in the video, when we talk about going out and observing some things in the nighttime sky. For this price range and type of telescope, we're gonna stick with between 600 and 700 millimeters for a focal length to get started for this first telescope. The final thing to take a look at are what accessories come with a telescope. And this can really be a mixed bag depending on the company and brand that you look at to buy. At the very least, try to find a telescope that comes with a decent finder scope and inch and a quarter eyepieces, preferably two that give you a good low and medium magnification to get started out for your child's observing. Based off of these criteria, there are three telescopes that I'm gonna recommend you look at buying for your child's first scope. And the first is going to be the Celestron Powerseeker 60AZ. Its 60 millimeter aperture, 700 millimeter focal length, and alt azimuth mount are a great starting point for most kids. It also comes with a nice finder scope, two eyepieces, and a Barlow lens. Although you honestly probably won't get much use out of the Barlow lens that comes with it. Depending on the market, 
and your region, this telescope normally comes in well under $100. My second choice for you is going to be the Celestron Astromaster 60LT AZ. This telescope is a higher build quality with a sturdier tripod, 700 millimeter focal length, red dot finder scope, and comes with higher quality eyepieces. These upgrades do come at added cost, however, with it coming in around $100 on most websites. If you're interested in getting a larger telescope with more aperture and don't mind paying well over $100 for your child's first telescope, you could also look at the 70 millimeter version of the Astromaster. I'll be sure to leave a link to these three telescopes in the description below if you're interested in taking a look at them, but I would also encourage you to shop around to various websites, particularly for different regions of the world, looking for coupon codes and sales in particular around the holiday season. Now that you've got a telescope for your child, the last thing that you want is for it to sit in the corner of a room and collect dust. So let's talk about some tips and techniques for how you can go outside with your kid to explore the nighttime sky with your brand new telescope. When I got my first telescope as a kid, the first thing I did was put in the highest power magnification eyepiece I had and went out to scan the nighttime sky and was able to see absolutely nothing. Do not make the same mistake that I did as a kid when your child goes out with their new telescope. You're going to want to start out with the lowest magnification eyepiece that you can when you're looking at any object. In fact, the best thing to use when searching for even something like the moon is the finder scope that comes with your telescope. This is going to provide the lowest magnification view to scan the sky to find it. Once you've got the moon in the crosshairs or the red dot of your finder scope, then put in an eyepiece. But make sure you use an eyepiece that provides a low magnification. To figure out magnification, let's imagine that you bought a telescope with a 600 millimeter focal length. To find the magnification of a 20 millimeter eyepiece, divide the focal length of the telescope by the focal length of the eyepiece. That tells us that your kid will be seeing around 30 times magnification. Encourage your child to study the craters of the moon, track its phases throughout the month, and just spend time exploring our closest neighbor in the solar system. Once you've spent some time on the moon though, you're gonna probably wanna have your child move to some of the planets of our solar system. And the biggest and brightest are gonna be obviously the best to start off with. During most times of the year, that's going to be Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and sometimes Mars. Find them in the exact same way that you found the moon, starting with your finder scope and then going with a low powered eyepiece. If you're interested in where these objects are going to be on a monthly basis, I've put together a night sky series that I update on a monthly basis for this channel and it's called The Night Sky. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you're interested in keeping up to date on what you can see in the night sky on a monthly basis. As for viewing things beyond our solar system, there's one object that I would encourage you to try to hunt down with your child, and that is the incredibly impressive Orion Nebula. To find it, go outside during the winter months and look for the constellation Orion. From there, train the finder scope on the three stars that make up Orion's belt. Once you've put in a low power eyepiece, scan down from that belt until you find a cloudy region of space, which is the stellar nursery that we call Orion's Nebula. This portion of space is forming stars in a stellar nursery and you and your child have just seen that through your new telescope with your own eyes in your own backyard. There's something very special about going out and exploring the nighttime sky with your family, particularly when it's a child who has an interest in this incredible hobby. I hope I've been able to help out a little bit with you in this process, and please let me know of any questions that you may have about telescopes to purchase 
or anything you can see in the nighttime sky in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.